HLVD, INSV, BBTV, am I speaking in tongues? Does the woman need an exorcism? Huh? No. These are all acronyms for plant viruses and viroids that have the potential to be fully eliminated from a plant's genetic line using a process called Mary Stem Culture, which I want to show you how to do today. I know for a fact that some European subscriber <laughs> is gonna have a big problem with the 96 ounce Coke Zero. <laughs> We went to Utah two years ago. They have a restaurant called Swig, which is like a soda restaurant. And I love Swig. Everything I do, I do it so that I can franchise a Swig. Anyway, today I'm going to show you two examples of Mary Stem culture. In the first example, we're going to show the process on a begonia. And in the second example, we're going to demonstrate on a tomato plant. It's cannabis, but I don't want to get demonetized. So just be really cool. Act cool in the comments, okay? Be cool. And also stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving an update on the firefly petunias, which are the glow-in-the-dark plants from this video. Back to Mary Stem culture. During any tissue culture process, we are cleaning the plant of external contaminants like bacteria, fungi, insects, etc. When we do Mary Stem culture, we are also able to clean the plant of internal contaminants like viruses. But what is a plant Mary Stem and where do I find it? Mary Stems are the part of a plant responsible for growth and development. Apical Mary Stems are located at the shoot tips and the root tips of a plant. And these apical Mary Stems are responsible for the primary growth and elongation of the plant. Because meristematic cells are not yet joined to the plant's vascular system, which serves as a pathway for viruses to travel through a plant, these cells are usually virus-free, so when we use them as samples for tissue culture, we can grow out virus-free plants, even if the mother plant is sick. The challenging part about doing this type of tissue culture is that the Mary stem is very small, like stupidly small. Whatever you are thinking, it is smaller than that. Because of this, you usually use a microscope to do this procedure. And even with a microscope, it's really challenging. Francisco from Plant Cell Technology is going to be doing the demonstrations today because I am so bad at this. So here's a video of Francisco demonstrating Mary stem culture on the apical Mary stem from the shoot tip of a large cane begonia. I've sped up this footage and cut it up, but the full video is about five minutes long since this is a bit of a tedious procedure. You can see that he's slowly peeling away the layers of the shoot tip, and at the end of this clip, once all of those layers have been peeled back, it will ultimately reveal the apical Mary stem that's inside and you'll see momentarily what that looks like. While you watch this example, I want to explain the process of using the Mary stem for tissue culture. First, you would need to sterilize the entire shoot tip prior to dissecting the apical Mary stem. Depending on the type of plant that you're working with, the sterilization method is going to be different. So I'd recommend looking for a specific protocol for the type of plant that you're working on. But generally a good place to start is a 10% bleach solution for 10 to 15 minutes. Then you would want to place a microscope inside of the laminar flow hood to do the sterile work and the actual dissection, which is the part of the process that you're seeing demonstrated right now. Once you got the Murray stem, you could just place it directly onto the TC media like you would with any other type of explant. Just to give you an idea of the size of the shoot tip, the tool that Francisco is using to do this dissection is called a hypodermic needle, and it's about the same size as a sewing needle. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Mary stem. I also had some attempts at doing Mary stem culture and I suck at it. I'm so bad at this. Every shoot tip that I touch turns to primordial goop. Although I don't work with medicinal plants really on my channel because they don't super interest me and they're also not legal to grow where I live, I thought this would be a useful example to show since I think that HLVD or hop latent viroid is probably the number one most popular plant ailment that people watching my channel would be trying to eliminate. This process is pretty much the same as the one that we just showed, albeit maybe a little more challenging since this plant just has smaller shoot tips than the begonia did in the first example. Earlier I mentioned that we could also do this process with roots since there are apical Mary stems on the tips of plant roots. I think the reason that we don't see a lot of tissue culture done with the roots is just because they're so hard to clean. Every part of the plant that goes into TC needs to be completely sterile, so it makes sense that the roots will probably be the most difficult part of the plant to 
successfully clean. Now this process doesn't work 100% of the time. Francisco from Plant Cell Technology told me that there's about a 50% success rate in growing out disease-free plants from a diseased mother plant. Here are a few examples of actively growing Meristem explants at different stages of growth. These are so small and they grow so slow that you could actually just start them in a petri dish and eventually once the callus is large enough then you could subculture it into a regular test tube or jar or magenta box or whatever type of container your heart desires. This is a highly relevant anecdote. <laughs> Except for I feel weird talking about it because I was just talking about Justin Jones from Created in a Garden on my last live stream. And he's probably like, can this lady please stop talking about me? But the reason I bring him up again is because he did the same process on a variegated Spiritus Sancti. And if you're not familiar with the world of rare plants, that is the most niche flex I have ever seen. Before I show you guys an update on the firefly petunia, I wanted to thank Plant Cell Technology for sponsoring this video. Plant Cell Technology is where I get all my supplies that I need to make TC Media. They sell plant growth regulators, MS Medium, and gelling agents, as well as many of the different types of tools and pieces of equipment that you need to do tissue culture. I've been really enjoying their biocouplers lately. I have my corpse flowers in them right now. You can see they look really freaky. They've been growing a lot of tendrils. And the begonias also go freaking hog wild in the biocouplers. Here's some pavovinas that I have growing in a biocoupler right now. Thank you again to Plant Cell Technology for sponsoring this video. And now, an update on the glow-in-the-dark plant. Bonus content. Today, I want to update you guys on the firefly petunia. When I first reviewed this plant, it had just come out of the box, so it was like a little bit wilted, but I didn't know when they were actually gonna be shipping out the rest of the plants. So I was excited to make the video right away and took the plant straight into the closet, and I was like, eh, it doesn't really glow that bright, which at the time, I think that was true. It, definitely didn't glow as bright as the marketing images. So today, now that you can see the plant is much healthier and more robust and it's flowering and seems really, really happy, I'm going to take it back into the closet and give you guys an update. I'm going to shut the door and try really hard not to show my toes. This is what it looks like. I would say this definitely glows more than it initially did when I first got it. Does it glow as much as the marketing materials? No, but come on. I don't think that's that much of a surprise to anybody. Can I help you? If you remember from that same video, I also put some of the firefly petunia leaves into TC to see if they glow in the dark. They don't. <laughs> I would show you, but I already hit it with the black light earlier and it didn't work. But I do have a bunch of callus growing. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I love making these videos. If you haven't joined my Discord already, the link will be in the description below. Bye!